Chris Grant didn't understand or appreciate Souls games until he got some simple advice. Think of them as rhythm games. Specifically think pattern recognition, precise timing, and physical mastery. Like rhythm games, the most satisfying part of the Souls experience is getting better. You, the player, improve, not just the character you're playing. It was a revelation when he finally got Dark Souls 2. He immediately went back to Dark Souls 1, and by the time Bloodborne came out, he was officially hooked on the formula. He expected to start at an advantage, you know, to leverage what he had learned in previous games. He was wrong. Bloodborne is hard. We all know that. It challenges even veteran players. In place of an opening tutorial stage, Bloodborne begins with a serious difficulty spike. The tutorial is clear. Abandon all hope, ye who enter. For those of you uninitiated into its particular charms, here's a brief primer. You're a hunter alone in the Victorian Gothic city of Yarnum. It is the night of the hunt, and the city is overrun with all manner of beasts. You'll use blood, that's blood echoes, blood vials, blood gems, and blood shards to name a few, to help you cure the town of its plague and end the nightmare. Progress in the game is well earned. Each death, and there will be many, sends you back to the last checkpoint. Enemies respawn and you lose your blood echoes to whatever killed you. The only thing you keep is the knowledge of maybe how to do better next time. And you'll want to do better. Failure is a constant companion, but it comes with the knowledge that you failed, and that with enough work, you can persevere. If you're lucky, talented, and smart enough, you can even summon friends and strangers into your game. Yarnum is a lonely and desolate world, but it's definitely more fun with friends. It's also musical. Bloodborne is designed to evoke through a combination of setting, mechanics, design, and story. It's a chorus, all singing in harmony, each element playing its part, building from the game's earliest moments into a crescendo that culminates in the game's final reveal. If you stick around long enough, you'll see the game transform from gothic to Lovecraftian horror. Its story is willfully obtuse. Like song lyrics, it's evasive and poetic. It's hard not to proselytize when discussing Bloodborne. Chris Grant wants everybody to experience it the same way he experienced it. He's envious of those who haven't played it yet, of their long march to Cleric Beast, the sudden encounter with Father Gascoigne, the process of learning the esoteric language of the game's devotees, a sort of code that sounds like we're talking about a game, but doesn't quite feel right. He wants you all to join him, to scrawl messages to him on the blood-soaked cobblestone streets of Yarnum.